What's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Parrot Anafi. Now this is one of the few drones that's gonna give DJI a run for its money uh, for real. Uh, we're gonna be comparing it directly against the Mavic Air, which is super popular, super compact, and probably one of my favorite drones of all time. Both of these actually share a lot of common features that we'll talk about, uh, but there's some specific advantage that each of them present, and we wanna ultimately find out which one reigns supreme, all things considered. So if you're interested in seeing which one comes out on top, let's get right into this comparison. Now first let's talk about the design and overall form factor of both flying camera platforms. Now for Parrot, the Anafi is the first fold out drone design that they've came out with and obviously it's designed to compete with the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro series of drones. And even though the Air, both in the terms of the drone and controller combination, has a smaller overall footprint, there are some interesting design attributes that the Anafi has to offer. Firstly, thanks to its lightweight carbon frame construction, it's about 100 grams lighter than the Air, which in combination of the slightly larger battery results in a slightly longer flight time. And thanks to the retractable arm design for the propellers, you can actually deploy the drone about half the time it takes to deploy the Mavic Air. Since the fold-out design is a little bit more involved on the Air compared to the more simple retractable design we found on the Anafi. Now, in terms of the controller itself, I certainly think that DJI has the better controller in terms of overall form factor and design, certainly more compact solution. But the new Sky Controller 3 from Parrot is a huge improvement from the giant monstrosity they they used to get with the Bebop and Bebop 2 drones. And from a functionality standpoint, both are extremely similar in terms of controller dynamics, the amount of controller options you have. Both transmitters have the same maximum distance of about four kilometers in terms of communication, and you get an HD uh, 30 FPS feed directly into your smartphones on both platforms as well. Now, before we get into the actual camera differences, let's talk about the gimbal itself because there's some interesting things about the Anafi. Firstly, it's using a uh, two axis Axis mechanical stabilization gimbal for tilt and roll, but the yaw axis is actually being uh, digitally stabilized and it looks just as good as the fully mechanical three axis stabilization system we have on the air. What's really interesting is that the Parrot can shoot actually about 180 degrees on its tilt axis. So if you want to shoot the sky or something above the drone, you have that capability. And like every other drone out there, the air is limited to about 170 degrees on its tilt axis, which is fine for most people, I think. Now let's talk about the cameras themselves. In terms of sensor technology, we're using a half 0.4 inch CMOS Sony chip on the Parrot versus you're looking about a half 0.3 inch CMOS chip, which I believe is also supplied by Sony, but there's a difference in terms of resolution on the CMOS chips. You're looking about 12 megapixel sensor on the uh, Mavic versus about a 21 megapixel sensor on the Anafi. Now, one of the major benefits of the higher resolution is the fact that you have a lossless digital zoom capability on the Parrot, giving you an effective uh, focal range of 23 millimeters by 69 millimeters in photo mode and uh, 26 millimeters to 78 millimeters in video mode. So it gives you a little bit more versatility in terms of what you can do with your shots on the fly. A similar feature that we found on uh, the uh, Mavic 2 zoom, but instead of zooming in optically, it's using a digital based system which is definitely not going to give you the same level of quality but definitely from a utilitarian standpoint and from a feature standpoint is pretty neat nonetheless. Now in terms of the video capabilities both can shoot to 4k at 30 fps and uh, the Mavic Air has 120 frames per second at full 1080p whereas you're looking at only 60 frames per second on the Parrot so definitely in terms of slow motion capabilities and high speed uh, frame rates. The Mavic Air has the Parrot beat on that front, uh, but in terms of overall video quality, both have HDR capabilities, both shoot around 100 megabits per second in terms of video bit rate, but we're gonna roll some side-by-side -side footage and you be the judge to what looks better to your eyes.
Now, in terms of flight dynamics, uh, the Mavic Air is certainly more advanced in terms of its aerial capabilities. It has forward, backwards, and downwards facing obstacle avoidance system. It has a uh, faster top speed, about 42 miles per hour, versus you're looking about 33 miles per hour in its sport mode for the Anafe. But surprisingly, in terms of hover stability and overall ease of use, both are actually pretty much on par with each other. The Anafe is extremely stable up in the air, even with a high uh, wind velocities uh, going right up against it and I would definitely put it on par with what DJI has to offer which is definitely pretty high praise. Both have awesome general safety features like find my drone and return to home function as you would expect with a modern uh, aerial camera platform. Now one of the most impressive things about the Anafi was the fact that it was almost 10 decibels quieter than the Mavic Air. The Mavic Air is extremely loud and generally speaking when you're flying a drone you want to attract as less attention as possible and that is definitely a big positive thing for the Anafi. Just take a look at this side-by-side -side, uh, noise level comparison. In terms of some of the intelligent flight modes, uh, both have a lot of share common features. They both can do smart dronies, hyperlapse, they can do orbit, uh, digital dolly shots, cable cams, all that kind of fun stuff that you expect. In terms of live subject tracking, I think the active tracking system on the air is a little bit more advanced and a little bit more reliable. And unfortunately, you do have to purchase the active tracking uh, capabilities on the Anafi, which is about an uh, in-app purchase, about 99 cents, which isn't a huge deal, but kind of does suck since DJI does include it for free and they, I think they have a more reliable system, but it's certainly usable on the Parrot side. We do have uh, 32 megapixel spherical panel capabilities on uh, the air as well as the hand gesture capabilities so you can control and uh, actively track uh, the drone by just using some simple hand gesture or something that the parrot anafi does not have at this point and really the only thing you can do is launch a drone out of your hand you're pretty much tied to the controller uh, for the most part uh, unless it's uh, using a follow me protocol or something like that so generally speaking uh, the uh, dji is definitely the more advanced uh, drone in terms of intelligent flight capabilities as you would expect. Now that's going to talk about overall flight times and battery performance. In terms of battery capacity itself we have a 2700 milliamp hour battery on uh, the Anifi versus you're looking at 2375 milliamp hour battery on the air. DJI claims about 21 minutes versus Parrot claims about 25 minutes. Based on the dozen flights that I've experienced with the Anifi and about uh, 25 flights I've experienced with the air, I range anywhere to between 12 minutes to 16 16 minutes on the air versus about 15 to 20 minutes on the Anafi. So uh, definitely uh, in terms of longer flight times, the Anafi has the air beat. Now to sum up everything we've talked about thus far, let's talk about the individual advantage that each of the drones present. Let's start with the Parrot Anafi. Firstly, it has that digital losses zoom capabilities. It has a greater range of a degree of tilt up to 180 degrees. It has the longer flight times. Plus it's much quieter in terms of noise levels. And lastly, uh, the price point is a lot more aggressive. Uh, right now you can get it on Amazon for under $550. And I'm guessing it's gonna go down even more as we go throughout 2019. So uh, compared to the $799 or sometimes DJI has sales for around uh, $699 and even refurbished models can go for around $639. It's still not going to compete with what you could typically find a Parrot Anafi for. So definitely a huge advantage there in terms of value. Now in terms of the Air itself, we uh, definitely have to say it has a smaller footprint both in terms of the drone and controller combination. It has uh, slow motion capabilities at 1080p at 120 frames per second versus uh, the best thing you can do as 1080p at 60 on the Parrot, as well as a full gesture and hand control mode. And lastly, it has a multi-directional obstacle avoidance system, which adds a level of assurance and uh, technology that is definitely not present on the Parrot side. But uh, really, other than that, guys, uh, honestly, this is the first comparison in a very, very long time where DJI has actually been challenged. I know they kind of own the skies and own the industry in terms of compact form factor drones, 
uh, but now you actually have a, a awesome a viable option that is uh, not only great in terms of its uh, aerial photography capabilities uh, but uh, presents some unique advantages that even uh, the air doesn't and before this thing really came out I, I would actually uh, keep uh, this drone I know we, we review a lot of drones in this channel but uh, usually the one that uh, I keep most often is the more compact ones and the air was my favorite uh, for a very very long time but this is actually a lot more affordable it's more compact it's easier to deploy and it has all those unique advantages I would honestly consider this over the air uh, based on my experience thus far. Now we'll uh, definitely uh, keep you guys posted in terms of any issues that we encounter later on. I've had this uh, for the last four weeks. Uh, thus far, no real issues or in terms of reliability concerns or anything like that. And hopefully the software will get more advanced and better as we go throughout 2019. Definitely love to hear your thoughts. If you have any specific questions, uh, love to hear all those uh, things in the comment section down below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and also make sure you have notifications turned on so that way when we upload a video, you can actually watch it. Thanks again for your support and we'll see you later. Take care.